So, um, thank you for putting my question again. Uh, I'll note that uh, comparatively, when it comes to the state voter registration list, uh, Illinois is what's called a bottom off state. Each of our 108 election authorities have their own voter registration database and they share information up with a statewide system and the statewide system shares information down. And that's why um, the, the breach in 2016 wasn't felt in the same way at the local levels. Uh, as I understand it, this state is constructed differently. It's a top-down system where uh, all of the locals, every one of the counties is relying entirely upon uh, the state technology infrastructure for the voter registration database. So from that respect, it's a much more high value target um, than, than Illinois, and the consequences of a successful breach are, are more significant, certainly. Um, with respect to voting equipment, um, I think, this, I don't know exactly the, the state of play in Minnesota, but in Illinois, um, most of the state is relying on technology that was purchased with HAVA funds in the early 2000s. Um, there's paper, and there's paper audit trails, and so you can do audits and reconstruct an election if you had to at a significant price if the software systems were taken down. But they're very difficult to defend. They're relying on software um, that isn't supported by technology companies anymore. They're relying on hardware where replacement parts aren't easy to get. Uh, so you, know, you invest, in my opinion, in defense to decrease the probability of a bad action occurring. Um, at the same time, you build plans for, for if it does happen. Um, failures to invest in election equipment, in software that runs statewide voter registration systems, that doesn't guarantee a bad occurrence, but it does increase the likelihood that it happens. Senator Ray. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, my third question has uh, two parts. Does Illinois have a provisional ballot? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was the um, uh, acquisition of the funds as uh, agreed to and indicated by both by both parties and your executive, um, was there any uh, negotiation on what it would take to get that? Because um, we've heard uh, uh, pretty strong rumors that the of money um, is worth about $5 million if only uh, the governor and the legislature would agree to um, provisional balloting. Um, so that's, that's, that's close. Okay. Provisional balloting, you get the hopper money. Um, in Illinois, um, was there any kind, any other kind of, or any kind of negotiation on what some one side or the other of your political parties or the governor said had to happen, or the money wouldn't be um, wouldn't be forthcoming to the Secretary of State's office. Mr. Craig. So. Uh, to, to my knowledge, in Illinois, this uh, this funding was not used, um, and the negotiations around it for anything outside of how to secure this cyber infrastructure. So there were no other uh, extraneous, still important, but extraneous um, matters brought into that negotiation. And I will point out, just in Illinois, we have provisional balloting, but that's because it was a federal requirement of Mojave. Uh, 2002, we have subsequently uh, adopted election day registration. And um, so it's my personal opinion that's been provisional balloting. Um, since the adoption of election day registration, there's the, the incidence of provisional balloting um, has gone down to almost to, to very small in those places that offer election day registration increasing. Um, some of our counties offer election day registration only at the uh, central uh, headquarters, um, and in those counties, there's a little higher um, incidence of provisional balloting, but that's because it's the primary insurance instrument for a question with respect to a voter's registration. So, Mr. Um, so Mr. Chairman, I would just uh, point out that uh, in Illinois' experience, uh, same-day registration, which Minnesota already has, is superior to uh, uh, provisional balloting and uh, 
to adopt that would be a, a step backward to an inferior um, inferior uh, policy of, uh, of if, election if I might integrity. Just not, I don't want to get into sort of local policy issues too much. I just want to clarify that when I said superior, I was sort of wearing I my hat. Guys in the, well, I mean, I thought it was a better insurance instrument, but that as an administrator, um, if you're able to self-cure on election day increasing and not push work uh, back to the central office that requires significant resource lift and um, opens up sort of the, the local politics, um, machinery. I thought of wearing my administrative hat that, that it was superior, uh, but I certainly don't want to wade into the sort of politics of the state. Mr. Craig, so Thank you. What, are the, what are the items that causes someone with same day registration to have to cast a provisional ballot? I mean, what, what are reasons for that? What reasons would there be for that? So there, there are a few uh, different things. For example, if you requested a mail ballot um, and you didn't bring it with you, and um, some counties will force you to vote a provisional ballot. Others will ask you to um, sign an affidavit. Uh, there's a little bit of a wiggle room in Illinois law on how to do that. Um, the primary one uh, where provisional balloting serves as, a, as an additional insurance instrument is there are a handful of folks who would try to register on election day, but they may not have the appropriate identification. Um, to register on election day, and that is the remaining bucket that is um, tiny, but used uh, statewide. And then Mr. Freights, what percentage of those provisional ballots end up getting counted then in the election? If, uh, if how does somebody have to, say the, the case where you said somebody doesn't have the right identification, what do they have to do and do these people come back and actually make sure their ballots are counted in ballot? Sure. sure. So there are a number of buckets, but if we want to look just at the bucket of what's called, I think colloquially in our county was a failed election day registration. Um, of their own volition, very few voters come back to cure that. If there is a super close race um, and campaigns get involved and start to get the list and chase voters down, then that uh, cure rate goes up, but it's um, low single digits in my recollection. So someone that says, like myself, who ran a special election and lost by 410 votes, not that anyone counts, um, <laughs> that, would, that, could, that could affect a heavy effect on the election. Well, so um, the incidence of a failed election day registration probably statewide wasn't even half of that. Um, it's a really tiny number of voters that can't produce uh, the ID is necessary to register in Illinois. We've got a fairly uh, liberal and progressive sort of registration uh, rules, but it certainly doesn't require a, a state um, issued driver's license. So uh, two pieces of uh, documentation, one showing uh, current address is what it takes, and um, nearly every voter is able to, to do that. Do you, uh, Mr. Crates, do you have we have a vouching system in our, our state. Do you have that in yours uh, for same day registration? Uh, not for same day registration. What does that mean? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And you know, uh, this will be a question in the end for you, Mr. Briggs. So, uh, Senator Kepmeyer was recently quoted as saying, uh, People are being hacked all the time. Uh, you're being hacked all the time. I am. This is no big deal. Unquote. So looking back at 2016 in Illinois, which uh, your experience with the you know, Russian attempt at uh, breaking into the system, would you think that was no big deal, Mr. Price? Um I certainly, I, I do think what happened in 2016 and what we expect to happen in the future is a, is a very big deal. Um, with respect to the first part of the comment, I think it's true our entire society is being socialized to recognize uh, that there are these threats out there, um, that we've all got to take some responsibility um, in, in the area to protect our data, to protect our systems. Uh, you see in airports and uh, billboards along the road suggestions that uh, individuals should protect themselves from cyber criminals. And so with respect to the, that original frame of that comment, 
you know, I agree this is happening everywhere. Um, what's different about elections is uh, the, the threat actors are significantly more powerful. Um, the consequences of success are potentially devastating. Um, and because of that, I, I think it is a, a big deal. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, 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 and just so I'm sort of understanding um, the extent of this threat uh, to, to withhold or to not allocate $6.6 .6 million, which would help the, our system in the state of Minnesota to be protected. Um, you know, it, it, it seems that you would want to do everything you can to protect the system as best you can with the resources that you have access to. Uh, so uh, maybe this is more of a statement than a question, uh, but you know, I mean, I take some personal precautions to try to make sure that my data and things are safe and secure. And I would hope that we would do everything we could at the state to, to make sure that, that that happens as well. Uh, and when I keep thinking about Minnesota being one of the 50 states who's yet to have this uh, money be put in place to try to help protect our elections, I, you know, I mean, I'm not a computer whiz, would never even think about hacking, but if I would, I would go after the one of 50 versus the other 49. W would that be a good assumption for me to make? Mr. Griggs. <clears throat> so, um, in some ways, these are sort of crimes of opportunity. Um, deploy the least resources sort of possible, scanning various websites and infrastructure, um, and getting into the easiest one to get into. Um, when we talk to local election officials around the, the country, we have the same conversation, or I did. Um, a, a tiny county would say, I barely, I don't have a stoplight. Why would the Russians come after me. It's like, uh, in Illinois, I would share that they're not coming after you, they're coming after anybody whose windows are unlocked and yours happen to be. It's a crimes of opportunity. So, um, to the extent you're not, you're not locking your windows or your doors, um, or investing in uh, infrastructure improvement, the chances of something bad happen are higher than in places where they're already making those investments. Um, and, and that's just sort of for routine, um, Attacks. I, I think the advanced persistent threat with a direct target um, on, on any place is you know, the probability of success for them um, and consequences for, for our side go up significantly. Representative Carlson, or Senator, excuse me, Senator Carlson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, just, I just promoted you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Chair, I, I have a few questions for Mr. I participated in the interim meetings that uh, Secretary of State Simon had uh, to define and clarify what actions he was going to take. And one of them that uh, particularly struck me was that he was concerned about access into the system. And one of the, those actions is to do to install multi-factor authentication. And you know, of course, that has to be trained. And what we have is one system across the state. And if you get in, you're in. And so you're in across the state, uh, the state uh, generally. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, uh, do you, if you can share, if this isn't a confidential answer, uh, what was the doorway that they got into the system? Uh, right. So in Illinois, um, we've got a, the statewide voter registration system. Again, I work for the county, and so I'm just passing on, I guess, my understanding of sort of public reporting. Um, but it, they also have a copy of it that is online that enables things like online registration or voter lookup. And so um, the access was to that sort of secondary system, which is, you know, mirrors the, the primary statewide voter registration database, but it was to the, um, uh, the online tool. Uh, so the access was from far away. So, Mr. So it wasn't through any county node. So, Mr. Craig, it sounds a lot like what a target corporation here got hacked. 
my, my understanding from the rules reports is that somebody got into a vendor of theirs through their system and were able to then get into the target system and steal a bunch of information. So through the HVAC. Yeah. And so, Representative Carlos. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And so one, once they are in, um, are you aware whether they were downloading information or whether they actually tried to change information? Uh, the the nature of their, uh, of their, of their it's, uh, it's undisputed that they were exfiltrating data and just pulling pulling voter records. And there's disagreement as to um, what that number is. There are different numbers in the um, uh, Mueller indictments versus what sort of Illinois' own um, investigation and finding had uh, ultimately in the tens of thousands of uh, pieces of data that were taken. Illinois was able to identify, I think, clearly somewhere near 10,000 uh, individuals uh, that then, they then that triggered the notification rules for uh, for data breaches. Um, no data was successfully changed, um, although there is, my recollection is that there were reporting uh, that there were attempts uh, to write uh, new data to the database as opposed to just uh, taking data. Well, that's a much sort of more difficult thing to do. Senator Carlson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and, uh, I, have, I probably have a couple of other questions, but uh, I have one more that I, that I have written down here. Uh, of your work in Cook County and in Illinois, uh, what's the current status of that work and what's the schedule and is it complete or partially complete? What's the, what's the current situation to get to getting these uh, actions taken? And if, by the way, I do say that you have twice as much money as, uh, as Minnesota does. Yeah, no, that's true. And, uh, right. You know, there are some costs that are sort of fixed regardless of the state. So think about a statewide voter registration database, and that may cost, you know, one to two million dollars to, to repair, and that's true no matter the size of the state. Leaving once you do that, the available funds to put into other infrastructure uh, is less. Um, so yeah, Illinois got probably twice as much, thirteen point eight or eight or so. Um, now, as I understand it. The, our state board of elections responsible for the statewide voter registration database obviously corrected all the vulnerabilities that they knew about. Um, they do uh, work with the Department of Homeland Security and with the state infrastructure and uh, information technology services to do uh, continuous scanning of the websites, looking for new uh, vulnerabilities and getting notified of those. Um, but as, as you may imagine, the elections field changes so fast. We joined a group called ERIC, and all of a sudden we're trading data uh, with now I think 25 or other states. Uh, new laws come online and they say people can automatically re register to vote when they go to the Department of Natural Resources, get a gun license, or when they're applying for unemployment benefits. And we tie in all these um, new systems to our statewide voter registration database. These are great service offerings. It's what we expect today, but it also, as our voters expect, but it also increases cost. It increases risk points. Um, you know, this is why I think the language that a lot of colleagues were using was the $380 million was important, but it may sort of be a, a down payment. Uh, in order to get to the heart of all these problems and get you where you want to be, and. Um, make it sustainable, you know, we need to be looking at whole of government investment, local, state, federal, um, at rates significantly higher than $380 million that was, that was given. Unfortunately, again, there's, a, there's another call to the House. As you know, we're on, our, our legislature's in session right now, and I don't know if they're just having fun with us, but maybe <laughs> if they take any more exercise, we're going to come down. So we're in recess.